Hello, my name is Mariana Kiel. I am a senior application scientist at Roche Sequencing and Life Science, and I'll be talking today about a single tube strategy for combined RNA and DNA library preparation for next generation sequencing and its advantages. Paired DNA and RNA sequencing enables a variety of analyses that can help us to understand the genetics of both disease and normal phenotypic variation, information that could be missed by analyzing just the DNA or the RNA in a given sample. However, most published studies do not integrate the genomic and transcriptomic data until the analysis stage, after the data have been acquired in separate experiments and from distinct cell populations, a strategy that potentially exacerbates the variability on sample heterogeneity. Performing two assays for DNA or uh, RNA as a starting material can be burdensome and impractical. Therefore, using a single sample containing both DNA and RNA in the same tube to generate libraries simultaneously streamlines the process of obtaining combined sequencing data. For the purpose of this presentation, we'll call this strategy the single tube workflow. During library preparation with a single tube workflow, the RNA molecules can be tagged so that later, during data analysis, the sequencing reads originating from DNA and RNA can be discriminated from each other. An option during library prep is to perform target enrichment to simultaneously capture specific regions of interest from the genome and their corresponding transcripts, diminishing sequencing costs and enabling the investigation of rare genetic variants. In addition, by performing target enrichment, the need for ribosomal RNA depletion is eliminated. There are several advantages on using a single tube workflow for paired DNA and RNA sequencing. This single tube workflow results in shorter turnaround time and less hands-on time compared to performing individual DNA and RNA library preparation, either sequentially or side by side. DNA library prep usually takes around two and a half hours to be completed, and RNA library prep takes about four hours without a ribosomal RNA depletion. If performed sequentially, at least six and a half hours are required to obtain libraries from DNA and RNA with traditional workflows. By converting DNA and RNA simultaneously into sequencing libraries with a single tube workflow, the turnaround time is reduced by about one and a half hours. A single tube workflow also reduces the person hours if DNA and RNA libraries are performed in parallel with only one technician required instead of two technicians for individual DNA and RNA library prep. And here we are not even counting the time saved with target enrichment that is also performed simultaneously for DNA and RNA libraries in the single tube workflow. The single tube method also conserves samples that often have limited availability, like FFP tumor samples, because total nucleic acid is used as a starting material. This way, the exact same tissue section yields both RNA and DNA data. Even though total nucleic acid extraction is not part of the single tube workflow, it's a required upfront step that contributes to the benefits of this workflow. When um, nucleic acid extraction is performed in separate tubes from DNA and RNA, RNases are used to obtain pure extracted DNA and similarly, DNases are used to avoid DNA contamination in the isolated RNA. Extraction of total nucleic acid, uh, which is the input of single tube workflow, has the ability of producing the loss of DNA and or RNA by not including DNAs and RNA treatments. It also helps to preserve the DNA to RNA yield E ratios from the original samples, which uh, vary based on the sample type, cell type, and from person to person. Typically, the DNA to RNA ratios are 1 to 1 to 1 to 5 for FFP tumor samples and 1 to 1 to 1 to 2 for fresh frozen tumor tissue. Another advantage of the single tube workflow is that it reduces sample variability. Intratumor heterogeneity can be described as the differences between cancer cells within a single tumor. 
different cells are represented in different colors in this figure. Some cancer cells in a tumor may have genetic mutations that are not present in other cells of that tumor, impacting tumor profiling. The tumor heterogeneity poses some te technical challenges for paired DNA and RNA sequencing. When the DNA and RNA assays are conducted in parallel from different sections of the tumor tissue, the tumor heterogeneity increases the likelihood of discrepancies between genome and transcriptome profiles. Thus, applying a single tube strategy for paired DNA and RNA sequencing can reduce the sample variability, enabling a more reliable tumor profiling. The single tube workflow provides paired DNA and RNA profiling from the same biological sample and deeper understanding of the tumor's behavior. The DNA reads detect biomarkers such as single nucleotide variants, insertions and deletions, and copy number variations. At the RNA level, it's possible to detect gene fusions, exon skipping events, splicing isoforms, and gene expression levels. Tumor gene variations are diverse and include localized genomic mutations and transcriptional variations. RNA sequencing data can provide an orthogonal verification of DNA variant calls. Variants present in the RNA level represent expressed variants that are more likely to be associated with biological effects. In cancer, for example, roughly one-third of the somatic single nucleotide variants that fall within coding regions can also be observed in the RNA, providing a biological filter for the candidate driver mutations. These mutations confer on tumor cells selective advantages that drive tumor genesis, and their accurate identification leads to development of target therapies and discovery of biomarker of prognosis. In addition, RNA sequencing can help to classify DNA variants in hereditary cancer. DNA germline genetic testing, performed from whole blood or saliva samples, for example, can identify individuals with cancer susceptibility. Some of the clinically relevant variants fall within introns and impact the RNA splicing process. However, splicing variants, especially those located far from the coding sequences, are challenging to identify through DNA sequencing. Therefore, splicing profiling by RNA sequencing can improve the detection of pathogenic variants while is also providing functional evidence for accurate interpretation of putative splicing variants. This way, with integrated DNA and RNA sequencing analysis, the pathogenicity of DNA variants can be reclassified based on the RNA results, providing a more accurate view of the genomic profiling. In summary, single-tube DNA and RNA sequencing uncovers molecular mechanism of disease and genotype-phenotype correlations, saves time and resources, preserves precious samples like FFPE tumor, and reduces bias from sample variability, enabling more reliable tumor profiling. Thank you very much for your attention.